Hi everyone, welcome to this video series on word embeddings. We are focusing on word to vec which is a, one of the popular uh, embedding techniques used in natural language processing. In the previous uh, video, we talked about the training process or uh, how we prepare the training data for, uh, for generating word embedding. Uh, in this video, I'll be showing you the uh, basic idea of embedding and how we use that basic layer of embedding in, in TensorFlow and Keras. So I'll provide you with uh, a walkthrough, a comprehensive walkthrough of a text classification for example uh, using IMDB dataset and this will be a binary classification. Uh, the focus is not on uh, you know sentiment analysis or binary classification focus is on understanding the default embedding layer provided by Keras and TensorFlow. And let's see how they work um, for a general numeric data. And then we will extend the idea to uh, word to vec That's the purpose. So we will do a, a dummy download of a data set from a URL, and then we'll do some preparation of data training and validation, a little bit of pre-processing, and then model creation using TensorFlow API, and uh, model training, and optionally, you can use uh, Tensor, TensorBoard, or without using TensorBoard also, you can complete the model training here. Some, some essential libraries, TensorFlow library here, the sequential model, dense for fully connected, an embedding layer. This is what I'm going to be showing you in the code here. And text vectorization library as well. So I'm not going to run this code. Some of this code uh, can take uh, a long time uh, to run. So this is a, the, these are the libraries. And then downloading the data set will take about two minutes. So I'm not going to do that. So essentially, this is the link from where you can download the IMDB data set which is basically a zip file. And you can mention the local folder where uh, you can you know, store the download. That means if you do it again, or if you download again, it's not going to download it a second time. It's just gonna reuse what is existing in the folder. The size of the data is pretty, not very big, but about you know, 82 MB. So this is going to take about a couple of minutes here. Now we can uh, save it. Uh, you can choose any directory. Uh, and uh, once you have it, so these are your folders. So when you download, uh, these folders will be automatically created like tests and train and so on and so forth. So this is my training folder automatically created in the previous step. And underneath the training folder, you will have bunch of files we are interested in these two folders the positive and negative that means these are classes so the movie reviews some are positive some are negative so positive and negative they are stored here let me show you the directory how this actually looks like yeah so this is how it looks like under the uh, folder training folder you have training and uh, under training you have positive and negative similarly you have tests also positive and negative that's how the data set is downloaded in that structure it has to be in that structure because you want to use tensorflow library to load it into your model we don't need this folder so just remove that folder essentially you have to make sure the folder structure is in this format like i showed you here uh, this is this is pretty much in that order you can see here the class and this is the class negative this is a class b that's the class you know positive so you have to mention the main directory which is my let's say training directory is my main direct training directory and under training you have positive and negative so this is the structure that is recommended by tensorflow so follow that structure i'm going to use this package get data set from the directory 
and I'm loading it from the train directory. Mention the batch size. As, as I mentioned again, I mean, how to train is not the focus of this code, but to understand the embedding layer. So just for validation, you can choose 20% of the data can be used for validation and give the name of the subset as training. This one is called validation. So you can load those and it is going to load it from the directory that you are pointing to by using this variable train directory. And after that, you set up the, um, you know, the batch, which will automatically read from those directories in terms of a batch. Okay, so it's going to read the data in terms of a batch. So this is how the movie reviews look like. Somebody wrote it, you know, some opinion about the movie, positive and negative. And the labels are automatically given, like, uh, you know, when you return or when you take the data from the batches, it is automatically going to label it, you know, positive as one and zero for negative. Now, a little bit of optimization. Uh, just because, uh, you know, it's a large data set, you might want to optimize the fetching of data and storing the data in the memory. So TensorFlow provides you auto-tune parameter and that essentially loads the data into the cache. So just mention uh, the, the cache and the prefetch and it will automatically bring the data or save it into the memory. Now the real thing is how we actually uh, use the uh, yeah, how we use the the embedding layer. Okay, uh, so essentially, how we are going to create the embeddings is let's say this is the movie review. We have to tokenize. That means we have to break break it into words, and then each word will be assigned some integer number or unique integer number and then we can use the embedding layer so the embedding layer is simply a lookup table and it is associating the integer indexes that we have created in the previous step with randomly initialized vector so first it will be you know randomly initialized vector then through the training process the vector will be op optimized and dimensionality is something that we can mention in the layer. So for example here, let's say I'm creating the embedding layer of uh, which can take 1000 words or 1000 numbers. And each of these numbers can be represented by using five dimensional vectors. Now, let's say I'm gonna feed these numbers one, two, and three. And notice here, after feeding this to the layer, one is going to be represented by a uh, random, uh, you know, vector, dense vector, and two is being represented by this dense vector, and three is represented by the vector here. This is the purpose, or this is how the embedding layer actually works. So in our case, instead of one two three it would be some integer given by us or we can use tensorflow package called text vectorization which will provide the integers automatically so the little bit of a change here is just the numeric data but for text data things will be slightly different for text data essentially you have uh, let's say review and these reviews have some words and another review some words here and some more reviews and each of the review can be of different length and these are your samples so let's say we have three samples but you cannot pass different length data or samples to the model we should standardize it so we can say that the sample length can be 200 
So we need to pass these two things together to the embedding layer. Essentially, we can say 32 and 10. That means 32 samples and each of the sample or each of the movie review is 10 words. 64, 15, 64 samples and each of the movie review is consisting of maximum 15 words. That's how we need to provide the input to the embedding layer. Now, after you pass this, let's say you pass in this shape, the return from the embedding layer would have additional dimension, which is for the dense representation. Let's take a look at it here. Let's say the embedding layer, and I'm passing the data. There are two samples. The first sample is consisting of 0, 1, 2, and these are tokens. And similarly, second sample is having three tokens here. So when you pass this data to the embedding layer, notice how embedding layer is going to return the output. For the first sample, so this is your first sample. For the first sample, these are my embedding. For zero, this is the embedding. For one, this is the embedding. For two, this is the embedding. Now, these are your dense representation of vector. And we said we would like to have the size of five. So it's going to return the five dimensions here. So this is your five dimension. Similarly, for the other sample, which is basically this, the three is represented like this, and four is represented by this vector, five is represented by this vector, and so on and so forth. This is how the embedding layers in Keras actually work. Now we're going to use this as an example for text processing. Now for text processing, we'll use a function called vectorization. And in this vectorization layer, I'm passing some data. And I can say the total number of tokens that I have in my data is 100, just for illustration. And the output mode is integer. That means I'm telling text vectorization return integer coding for each of the words here. And the output sequence length is five, 5. That means I'm saying every sample is going to be maximum 5 words. Now, when you do this, and after that you adapt to the training text, and the output will look like this. You notice here, for each of the uh, sample, let's say, this is a sample sim sample sentence. There are one, two, three, and five words. So you got these five words here. Similarly, for the next one, you have this one here. So likewise, you can convert the, the text data into a numeric format here. So back to the code, the same code, IMDB. So let's create a function which will do a some customary pre-processing, really not required. Just the basic pre-processing of lower casing and removing some of the un unnecessary HTML code. And this function is going to be applied on the text data. Let's say we have 10,000 vocabulary words. It could be more in practical projects. It could be 100,000, 500,000, or even more. But in this illustration, I'm taking 10,000 as the vocabulary size, and each of these sample or each of the review is going to be a length of 100. So now I'm going to call the text vectorization, provide the function which the vectorization will apply on the text data, mention the vocabulary size, then you tell vectorization to provide the encoding of the text or the word in terms of integer. Also mention the sequence length, which is 100 in this case. Map it to the data that we have, adapt to the text DS or data source that we created earlier. 
So now this is done. So now you have a vectorized vector vectorized layer or vectorizer layer, which uh, has encoded the input data, which is movie reviews data in terms of integer coding. Now we can construct the sentiment analysis model, and we will use continuous bag of word, or you can use Cape Graham model as well. Embedding layer. We described it earlier. Embedding layer is going to take the integer encoded vocabulary and it will convert those integers to a dense rep representation. And that dense representation would be the input to the neural net that we are building. So, sequential model the first thing that we need to pass is the vectorizer layer, which is encoded and also, each of the encoding is converted to a dense representation, and that is your embedding layer here. You're mentioning my embedding layer has a vocabulary size of 10,000, and let's say my embedding dimension is 16, for example. So each of the word in the text will be converted to a dense representation of the size of 16, and then we average them because one sentence will have uh, like many words, so you would like to average them. Pass it to a hidden layer. This is again optional. I mean, you could have in text, uh, you know, text processing. So now in the next example, I'll be talking about um, actually using the embedding to train a word to vec model.